Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. All right, I just had a slice of cake, and I've got like two episodes in me before I crash. Oh, well, hopefully you can finish it in two episodes. All right, we're going to do this. Go, we're going to speed right. run All right, this. we're going to do this. It ain't too late to unlock the right. potential of this place. Okay, we're unlocking the potential of this place. So quickly. Oh my god, look at us go. It arrives just in time. So this is actually another... Um, is cooking. This is actually another historical thing. I don't want to go. Oh, through but it. like twenty, a twenty another wave, 20, 20 wave, <laughs> a twenty thing. wave historical moment. Well, this thing, like, I, it's it's too bad we can't do it. Go like I don't like I don't want to go through them again, like because there's just too many there. But um, but there are a lot of like just the really interesting storytelling things that they do there. Oh yeah, I like, think it's definitely inter like usually worth checking out. So this is the one: reduce damage from falling, plus two hundred percent damage. Oh, from falling cool. on foes. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's super awesome. Let's see, what are we doing here? Uh, chicka chicka chicka. Alright, chicka chicka chicka. Alright. Yeah. This black rise like hot pineapple chowder on a cold day. Brings back memories. The shards are getting harder to find. Well, that sucks. Uh... Yep. <laughs> I knew it like that. I knew it like that. But from an outside perspective, he just flipped up in the air yeah. and just did a this is we're done. All right, good job. Good try. Good effort. Rux is nice enough to not say anything about it. <laughs> but everyone saw what happened. Didn't want to say anything to the kid, but <laughs> get mighty worried worried about him. It was unbroken. Uh, Kept a straight face, but yeah, that was pretty funny. That was, <laughs> God, I almost lost it right there looking I, at him. Had a good internal laugh. <laughs> oh, there's your other. Yeah, when you upgrade the the thing, you get nice. A solid frame can put an extra sting in every slice. Oh. Uh, yeah, what the I guess. I guess. If we have to beat the game. Is this guy, this, uh, Rux actor, has he been in a lot of other games? Nothing more. I mean, he was the one in Transistor. Oh, sure. Um, but I I didn't actually go looking into his history. I don't know if he'd done, he's done, like, multiple other stuff. Not everything blew up in the Calamity. Maybe they just have him on, like, full-time now. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I would. Same lines. Yeah. Like Colford Cauldron here blew up way ahead of its time. The cauldron boiled over some 300 years ago. I wish more the competitive games had announcer packs. Yeah, like, Valve has just been, like, the kings of, like of doing yeah, cool, like, like user-generated stuff. Yeah. And stuff like that, and, like... There's no reason, like, League of Legends couldn't do it also. Totally. But... I mean, they seem to be a lot more lore-focused now, so maybe they're... Well, it's because they, it, were, but they were really bad at doing lore. <laughs> it's true. And also, to be fair, like, one of their most recent skins is, like, their fish character dressed up like the Easter Bunny, so... Yeah. If they can do that, they can <laughs> give me freaking You're right, there's room. announcer pack. Yeah, I mean, if, like... Or, like, Rocket League. If I could have Rick and Morty commenting my Rocket League games... Uh-huh. It would make an already fun game even more fun. Let me go. Let me go. They could just sit H. John Benjamin in a room just to record. <laughs> yeah, like in a couple a couple hours. A couple hours of Archer or Bob Belcher <laughs> voice just. And he could, he didn't even have to care. He could just be total apathy. Like, what's going on? <laughs> that's that's enough for you. <laughs> yeah, actually, would be. Apathetic H. John Benjamin would be an amazing announcer pack. <laughs> I would spend ten dollars on like, it. Like, sp like sell out the sell out pack. <laughs> the sell out, the sell out pack, and just. Oh god. Yeah, I, think, I don't know what is. Yeah, like lore is such a is such a hard, like because we talked about it earlier, like, the barrel test of the yeah. Uh, of like what different people want out of their games and one of the things that like League of Legends lore is one of these things that's like is it core to the experience like no not in the way that most people think of League of Legends but there's all these other characters and people are some players are just naturally inclined to care about them and on some level I mean, and you could kind of get attached to your favorite hero in a way maybe not in a lore way for some characters certainly and like if I have a favorite character having a whole like a whole music video about that character or something is kind of cool yeah, but like, I, it's not like I agree. Lore is not top near the top of the list 
for the engage like the engagement on that game, or at the very least in the way that the game is currently, right? Like, there's totally right. Like, given the fact that they're like a character based competitive game, for sure, putting lore into their into their characters is totally a reasonable thing to do. But I think it's just one of these things that like they were just not super good at it for a long time, and then, like most of their lore just came in terms of these like one pagers on the character thing, and right. that was it. And then they had. They didn't take. They weren't careful enough when they did their. Uh, when they did their like additional lore stuff, like they had essentially like a faux newsletter. Um, I don't remember this. Uh, for League of Legends, it was in client. So unless you're playing League of Legends, you probably uh, got it. Okay. But it was essentially like, let's report on news things that are happening in the League of Legends world, and they weren't careful enough about like. Paying attention to each other, and then like story lines got crossed, and then you know like uh, like things that had to be true couldn't be true anymore because like they they contradicted each other, or they had to come up with like really dumb fixes for lore problems because they were just backed into a corner. It's sounding very superhero comics now. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean that's that's sort of it kind of is. It, it's it's a problem you Similar. you get when you when you start doing one property for too long is that like some stories are just not just can't hold more than I mean even even like comics that, that can can stand for like hundreds of issues like if that character's gonna be around for 30 years like you're gonna ha you're gonna want to do things that that have weight and consequence and having too many of those things is gonna be really hard to jam into with the other 80 things that have had consequence over the, the course of the last couple of years. I feel like League lore functions better almost the more separate you keep the character stories uh, in a certain way. Like, I mean, oh, I, well, I mean, it's definitely easier. It's certainly easier, yeah, just given how all the characters seem to have come from different places and different sort of universes. Yeah, well, I mean, they have, like... And some of them seem like they kind of go together, and they seem to have kind of naturally found those ones that, like, are these cluster... Have some history. Or well, they something. did. They well. So what they did was they have their. <coughs> they have a lot of their trope space set up. So there's Demacia, which is like the knights, right? They're like the good guys. Sure. And those are all the tropey good guy stuff. So there's like the ranger and the the head knight and the king and the uh, and all these characters that like go along with Demacia and they're like the good guy version of the characters. So, I see. Okay. Uh, and then they have like their, their their more evil version of that, and then they have like their their steampunk land, and then they have their like. Their Moogle equivalent, um, and all of these characters, like essentially, what they can do is it allows them to come up with different characters, and from a that are fun from a gameplay perspective, and create, uh, fit them into a, a greater tapestry without actually having to. I don't want to say without having to work too hard, but sure. it naturally lends itself to create connections with other characters just by saying like, oh, this character is from place X. Right. And I recognize place X. It does seem easier to emphasize, at least from a lore perspective, the where they're from rather than what they're doing here and how they're interacting with everyone else. Right. But I, I admittedly, I've not been paying super close attention to the League stuff, other than the like the videos that I've been cranking out. Made a right comfortable bed for all those bullets. But even then, like they have a lot of. Um, They get a they get away with a lot of the that was where I was looking for like in game they have a lot of like specific character taunts so like a character if they use like the taunt command and they're around a special character or if they're like on a, the same team as a character they're against another character they'll have specific lines oh nice and a lot of it is kind of the the stuff we've been talking about here right with it like the 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 oh, I had said a good word for it but like the contextual narrative right? right right like hey here is a thing that you weren't expecting that kind of pays off i guess one of the things that i'm, I'm most interested in about this kind of stuff is do we love this kind of stuff from bastion because it is novel or because it is just like built into the human brain as something that we're always going to like as long as it's done well that is a good question i mean it definitely is it it definitely i think is both to a certain extent but i don't know which one right like is the main reason why it appeals so much. Yeah, I mean, like, it definitely, it's definitely novel at this time. Absolutely. I, I can't actually think of another game, which definitely makes it more powerful than it would be otherwise. But I don't know when all is said and done if that's going to be good enough, right? Like, if, if that's just, if it's just a phase that 
so like a bunch of games will keep will do it until it stops being novel and then we'll um and then we'll move on to something else and oh. then like 30 years from now somebody will kickstart a, a game that does the kind of thing <laughs> on the bastion nostalgia yeah. yeah now like well i mean i think in the specific sense of what this game is doing there is novelty to the specifics of its approach but in a broader sense efficient narrative delivery is I mean I think something that appeals no matter what form it takes oh, like sure. being able to deliver narrative in a way that says a lot with a little even if it's a lot that you weren't even coming to the game experience for like there are a lot of people who may, may just like have come to Bastion and played through mo most all of it really just to enjoy this action combat sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the cool ways that weapons, the, the customiz customization, the way weapons interact and stuff like that. But, um, and Transistor as well. But, take back what's ours. you can, you were, like, a lot of story and a lot of character and a lot of history is communicated without interrupting you, without interrupting that. Yeah, I think that's, that's going to be one of the things that is a huge takeaway from this is, is how to do narrative in a, in a non-disruptive way. Right. And like in some games, obviously, like I think it's the amount, to, the degree to which it is non-disruptive can vary. Like, I don't think it is. Like, I don't think the Metal Gear approach is actually wrong. I think the Metal Gear approach is the Metal Gear approach. And for some people, that's like, and for some games, that's what you want. Like, I, when I go into a Metal Gear game, I know what I'm getting into. And that's and that's part a big part of the reason why I'm going. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of games and for like this thing we can being do able to do less is more now. less with more like this or more with less it's episode 10 or 12 <laughs> in a row now i'm sorry guys <laughs> oh jeez it's either them or us but if we win they win too our bastion is everybody's game and i think that and the narrative stuff is strong and it's efficiently delivered so that whether you came for the narrative or not like you're getting it and you're able to enjoy it because it's not stopping you. It's not. It's not annoying you. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's never getting in your way. Really. It's never getting in your way. I think that. I think that it's. Not only is the narrative really good, which puts it in the place where they can, where they can start to get away with that. But I think that like. The contextual, the contextual stuff is what I what I always remember about this yes. game, and I yeah. think that I'm interested to see where else this pops up, and and if it maintains its level of of novelty, or if it just sort of is a is a technique that becomes popular for a little while, and then. I mean, that's the impression away. I've been getting from the like the trailer or the footage I've seen from what is, it, is it Firewatch the. Uh, Overwatch, the, the no, Blizzard thing? No, no, not the not the Blizzard thing. The um, it's an indie game that is like a guy wandering around like uh, with a walkie-talkie out in the uh, woods, and yeah. he's like uh, talking to someone. Um, it may, it may not be that that's actually doing the same thing either. It just be I may have a an inaccurate impression of it, but uh, I mean fundamentally, it's just having the narrative feel responsive and reactive to what you're doing, even if it's not really seriously reacting like it's not like the game is changing based on what you're doing mm -hmm. it like even in cases where you take a certain path where you had two options you're just going to get different vocal responses from him but the vocal response is going to acknowledge what you did in a specific and really and in a specific way and with character that tie like really meshes with the game is the same sort of character that he says everything else yeah. i can't actually believe we got this far without talking about the stanley parable that is weird. Yeah, because that is like... Shame on us. <laughs> yeah, it is like the biggest innovator in this. Because that came up... With, yeah, Stanley Parable definitely. Yeah, the right. demo at least came out before this. Way before this. Um, <clears throat> or like the original version. I'm pretty, he, yeah, I'm pretty sure it beats this. Yeah. Predates it. Oh, pretty sure. To keep but yes, Stanley Parable, also another... And also incredibly novel and really enjoyable. Yeah, I think it does a lot when it comes down to like the, that reactionary stuff. But... Yeah, I haven't seen too much. Because there's a big difference between a game like the Stanley Parable, which is like reacting to the choices in Dear Esther or Gone Home, which is like using the the movements of the player to pace out a story right. rather than react to specific obvious choices that they've made. Right. Like what the player does is all planned. It's just it's it's how much the player does or doesn't find right. along the way. 
Or it, does, it doesn't yeah. feel like it's necessarily reacting to you. It's just fe feeling like you're finding more, and you're and the entire reason you're wandering in that space is to find more. Right. Whereas this just feels like you're trying to navigate a space, but it's reacting to you and acknowledging everything you do, and specifically, like even if you just talk to the little squirt too many times. Right. The slingers, the wilds with their calling, the brushes, they moved in shadows, but the calamity found them. Yes. It's a good game. Yeah. I want to play it more next yeah. time. Next time. Oh my god. Look at that segue. Look at that so You're so good. I'm Damn. so I'm in awe of incredibly skills. good at Let's Play as, I'm, as long as I'm not playing. <laughs> okay. Alright guys, thank you very much. We'll see, see you in the next one. Bye.